Does anybody else work in a school that has a hundred choices for lunch? Good morning! We are at school. It's Thursday, January 11th. And Paisley is working on her homework from last night. She had a math sheet that was front and back. She has another math sheet where she has to cut out a ruler and do some measuring. She had another sheet for reading where she had to read a book, decide if it's fiction or nonfiction, and then answer a text-dependent question and spelling words and reading every night. That's a lot of homework for a first grader. But she is working on it. It's all due tomorrow. Her teacher gives it to her on Monday and she has to turn it all in on Friday. So she's really good and responsible about getting it all done. Doesn't her hair look cute? She got pigtails and they're red. The hair dye that we put in her hair is supposed to wash out in four to eight washes and it's still really bright, isn't it? I think she's I washed, washed it. it like four times. Yeah. I don't know if y'all, remember when I had blue hair? I had blue hair once and it washed out in two washes, it's seriously. But this was the same kind and it's been four washes. Mm -hmm. So, Ma Mama put a lot more on this one though, so. And I think the red just sticks to her hair better, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I went and made a few copies this morning for our social studies for needs and wants. My kids are taking a quiz today and we are gonna read a story called Those Shoes about a little boy who wants some shoes that are like cool shoes. And so we're gonna talk about whether that's a need or a want and they have to explain why. I am, I have a faculty meeting after school today so I will be going to that and I'm probably gonna try to work till five because tomorrow's Friday and I've got to do my newsletter and plan for next week. We are out of school on Monday, so that's exciting. So I'm just gonna to try to work a little later this afternoon and get a bunch of stuff done. Those posters that fail, you can see up there. I'm going to put some more tape on those and try to get those back up on the wall but they'll probably fall down again because they fall like all the time. Oh, jeez. So I'm gonna go and get some stuff done and I'll catch back up with you guys probably during my planning today. Or when my kids go to lunch, actually. Yeah. Does anybody else work in a school that has a hundred choices for lunch? kids are having beef tacos and ACP today, which is chicken and rice, and they have choices. So these were the choices in the lunch line today. This is totally insane, and they can get some things with what they ordered and some things they can't get with what they ordered, and so I have to kind of stand in there and like make sure they're getting the right thing. But for fruit, they had oranges or juice, so they could choose one of those, and then for their beef tacos, they could get yellow cheese, salsa, lettuce, and then if they got ACP or chicken and rice, they could get white cheese, one scoop of chicken, one scoop of rice, but they couldn't get chicken or rice if they got tacos, and then they had another choice of rice, corn, or beans. Like 100,000 choices. I don't know how in the world kindergarten and first grade do it. But I just got done serving them, and now I'm back in the room. I wanted to catch up with you guys just for a minute. I have been testing all morning. And luckily, my assistant came in from 9.15 to 9.45, and she started reading The Chocolate Touch, which is a chapter book, to my students so they could kind of take a break from their literacy rotations. And I got eight students finished, completely finished. I have 10 more, because I have 18 total. And all of the students that I'm testing are from other second grade classes. So I'm not actually testing my own students. And I feel pretty good about that. I've gotten eight students done in two days. So I'm, I'm okay with that. When they get back from lunch today, we're gonna do our needs and 
excuse me, we're gonna do our needs and wants quiz. And we're gonna read this book. Well, it's over here, I'll show you. Those shoes. And then they're gonna do a little writing activity to determine if those shoes, the shoes in the book, are needs or wants and why. And then they have to draw a picture of it. This is what it looks like. So it says, in the book, those shoes are the fancy shoes, a need or a want. And then draw a picture of the boy in his shoes. So we'll do that first. And then their quiz, they have to tell what a need is, what a want is, and then at the bottom they have to circle the needs and underline the wants. So, we shall see. I printed out my new learning target this morning. I gotta put it in my page protector, but it says I can give examples of needs and wants, and I'm gonna put that right there for their learning target. But I am going to go into the teacher's lounge and eat a bite and chat with my team about some of their students that I tested this morning. And then I will check back in with you guys when my kids go to gym. Maybe. Maybe not. If not, then I'll see you guys probably after school. One equals six, so I just outed the five. I done. 10, 20, 30. 10, 20. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Is this 10? No, that's one. But are there 10 ones? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. <coughs> Yes, good. Are you double checking? You were a minute ago. Are you still double checking? You know what you could do to make these easier to count? Put in rows of 10. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why don't you circle ten? And then that way we can count them a lot faster than by ones. We can count by tens. One more day till Friday. My kids are going home. I just walked first load bus riders out to the bus and it is raining. And it's chilly and yucky. But tomorrow's Friday, so that's a plus. For math this afternoon, we're talking about problems with unknown change. And so one of the problems we did, I had them close their eyes and imagine a movie in their mind so they could think about the situation and where the mystery box might go because that's what I call the box that you put the number in. It's the mystery box. It's a mystery. So one of the problems was like, Kira had eight balloons. Sally gave her some more. Now she has 11. How many balloons did Sally give her? So I had them tell me what they know from the problem, like what information do we know and what information are we trying to find out, and if the answer was going to be more or less than 11. They did pretty good with that. And then they had to show, I had them model with cubes. So I gave them cubes and I gave them base 10 blocks and I had them model to me as I was reading the problem, the situation. So they had eight cubes and then they gave themselves some more so that they had 11 and then determined that the answer was three and then we did another one which was kind of reverse so Sally had 11 balloons she let go of some by mistake now she has eight balloons left how many did she let go of so they took 11 some flew away and then um, the answer was three so then I had them work on some on their own. Like this. And these are problems, like I said, with unknown change. So Sally had 34 star stickers. She went to sticker station and she bought some more. So that's the mystery box. Now Sally has 54 star stickers. How many 
stickers did Sally buy at Sticker Station? So, she got to a friendly number by adding six. So, she put the 34 under, jumped six to 40, 10 more to 50, and then she jumped four to 54. And so, her answer was 20. I love it when we have problems like this where they have to show their work and we share strategies so they can see all the different ways that they can solve these problems to still get the right answer. And a lot of kids want to just get to the answer, but I tell my students that I don't care what the answer is as long as they show me how they got there. Now, ultimately, I do care what the answer is, obviously but I don't want them to just write an answer down and expect it to be okay because they need to be able to show me how they count, how they come up with the answer so that I know it makes sense to them. So I'm gonna go through these and grade the ones that haven't been checked yet because I kind of walk around as they're working. That way it's less work for me to do later. Check the ones that haven't been checked. I need to work on my newsletter for tomorrow since tomorrow's Friday and get some other things ready for tomorrow as well. We have a faculty meeting this afternoon at 3.15, so I'm going to try to get as much done as I can before I go to that meeting, and I'll probably take my laptop and work on my newsletter while I'm there. Because I can listen and work on my newsletter at the same time. Plus, our principal is going to be talking about some of the things that he brought up to us at the school improvement team meeting on Tuesday, so I've pretty much heard it already, unless there's anything new. I will let you guys know how the meeting goes and I will touch base with y'all after the meeting is over. That stinking bell always rings when I'm trying to film. I just got back from my meeting and I'm feeling super stressed. Do you guys ever go to meetings at school and you go in feeling good and you leave feeling like stressed? That's how I feel right now. Oh. We had a little bit of training. I just got back from my meeting and I'm feeling super stressed. Do you guys ever go to meetings at school and you go in feeling good and you leave feeling like stressed? That's how I feel right now. Oh. We had a little bit of one-to-one -one training since we are going to be a one-to-one -one school next week. So we had to work with table groups. We read an article and wrote down some things that we learned from the article and then we kind of did a jigsaw and shared. And then our principal was talking about, um, you know, some things that we're gonna do coming up for tutoring after school tutoring, we've got an allotment of money, so teachers are gonna be given the opportunity to stay after school two or three days a week and tutor students to help them get ready for end of grade testing, third and fourth grade students. After the meeting, I was talking to my team about our testing that we're doing right now and what some of my students or how some of my students did. And it's just really depressing because these kids just, they're seven years old and they're having to read a piece of text and answer two written questions about it using details from the book. And if they make one small careless mistake, it just jumps them down to the next level. And it's just sad because for several reasons. Number one, they're seven. And number two, they shouldn't be put under that much stress. We shouldn't either, and it just makes me sad for them. And I just, you know, we put all of our heart and soul into these kids and work with them every day, interventions, you know, parental contact, small groups, one-on-one, -on -one, peer tutoring, and it's just like sad. It's just really sad. And with our school this year, our school, we are a D school. And with that being said, I teach in a very rural area 
we have a lot of low income families and so these students don't have a lot of experiences that other children get but they're expected to do and know the same things so it's just it's just really hard and sometimes you have those good days and sometimes you have those really hard days and today is one of those really hard days it is 4 35 I haven't done anything that I wanted to do I graded a few of these math pages but I haven't done my newsletter yet and yeah so I'm gonna work on that try to get some stuff done I don't want to stay later than five but I might I don't know I'm gonna get some stuff done and I'll check back in with y'all soon I just got to my car. I was gonna vlog before I left, but I was just in such a hurry to get out of there because I'm just over it for today. And it's raining and my glasses are wet. But I'm just super stressed. I am I just feel really stressed. So I'm gonna go home and I'm probably gonna take a bath with a bath bomb and just kind of relax and chill out and I don't have Paisley this evening. She's with her dad. So that'll be a good time for me to just kind of relax and de-stress from the day. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video today. I know it wasn't the most positive, but like I said, sometimes you just have those days and you have to just suck it up and just remember to do what's best for your kids and today is one of those days. If you like this video, click on the thumbs up button down below to let me know that you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can see videos from me. I have playlists of my teacher vlogs. If you're interested, you can go check those out. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!